Putin thinks it's only about Ukraine anyway. He sees himself as at war with the West. And secondly, no one is talking about admitting Ukraine right away Indeed. while the war is raging. Uh, we're only talking about sending a clear signal that when this is all over, they will be brought in so that we have some secure borders in Europe again. Uh, NATO is really the only organization that has been effective uh, when it comes to deterring conflict in Europe. Russia has never attacked a NATO member. They've only attacked countries that are not in NATO. And so I think when this is all done, uh, we are going to have to bring Ukraine in. And I think it's wise to say it now. So the American president, Joe Biden, met Rishi Sunak and then King Charles ahead of a summit of NATO leaders in Lithuania tomorrow. His meeting with the PM lasted less than an hour. And we can catch up with Isabel Hardman, our political commentator. Welcome, Isabel. Hi, Dan. Uh, they, they weren't together very long, were they? It was more of a courtesy call, really. Did they get much business done? Well, they did cover quite a few different topics. So they talked about Sweden's accession to NATO, um, Ukraine's um, hopeful membership um, process for joining NATO, uh, cluster munitions. Obviously, the US decided to uh, send cluster bombs to Ukraine. Uh, my understanding from that is that um, Rishi Sunak made clear to Joe Biden that the UK is continuing to uphold the convention banning uh, the uh, development or supply of cluster weapons that it has signed up to, but told Joe Biden that he understood the difficult choice the US had taken. Mm. Uh, and the Downing Street readout after that was that uh, this was something that Russia, as the aggressor, had, had pushed uh, the US to doing. And they talked, you'll be astonished to hear, about artificial intelligence, which mm. I think is uh, Rishi Sunak's uh, stock thing to discuss with, with anyone who comes across. OK, um, it's going to be a, still a, a tricky meeting of NATO in uh, in Lithuania. Thank you, Isabel. I want to welcome now Kurt Volker, the former US ambassador to NATO, former US special representative for Ukraine. Uh, Mr Volker, hello. Hi, great to be with you. Good to have you here. Your, your thoughts on the decision, the American decision to supply the Ukrainian military with cluster bombs. It is, well, the president described it as a difficult decision for obvious reasons. Quite hard to justify, don't you think? Absolutely justified, and I think it's long overdue, in fact. Um, Russia is killing civilians intentionally as we speak. Uh, the reason people worry about cluster munitions is because after a conflict, sometimes they are left around and civilians get hurt. But civilians are dying right now, and if this can help end the war more quickly by helping Ukraine drive the Russian forces out, I think it's entirely justified. But you, you make it sound, Mr. Volker, as if it was an easy decision. Surely it cannot have been. These munitions are banned by something over 130 countries for a reason. You state the main one, which is having been deployed, they, for many, many months or longer afterwards, they can be a, a cause of death for, for civilians, including children, or maim innocent men, women and, and children. And that could well be the case with these weapons. So a difficult decision to provide them to Ukraine, despite the pressure Ukraine's under through the shortage right. of its own munitions, surely? Yeah, well, I think that's just the point, is that if we had other better munitions in sufficient quantity and could use those and they would be effective, then of course you'd prefer not to use these. Uh, but th that is simply not the case anymore. Ukraine is going through thousands of artillery shells uh, every month far more than we have in stockpiles or that we're able to produce or even all allies together are able to produce. Mm. And so I think that uh, we are down to a choice of you know, letting Russia continue to attack and kill Ukrainians, bomb Ukrainian cities, maternity hospitals, um, the, the executions of civilians, the, the war crimes they've committed are unspeakable. And uh, either allow that to happen or throw at it what we can. Okay, on another matter on the table in Lithuania, why is the president, why is the White House not warmer on the prospect of Ukraine joining NATO after the war comes to a conclusion? Yeah, it's really hard to explain. Uh, I think the driving uh, consideration for the White House is that they don't want to upset the narrative that this is a Russian war against Ukraine and we're not turning it into a NATO war against Russia. So they, they want to be very clear about that. But I think... That caution is overstated. I don't think that, first off, Putin thinks it's only about Ukraine anyway. He sees himself as at war with the West. And secondly, no one is talking about admitting Ukraine right away Indeed. while the war is raging. 
Uh, we're only talking about sending a clear signal that when this is all over, they will be brought in so that we have some secure borders in Europe again. Uh, NATO is really the only organization that has been effective uh, when it comes to deterring conflict in Europe. Russia has never attacked a NATO member. They've only attacked countries that are not in NATO. And so I think when this is all done, uh, we are going to have to bring Ukraine in. And I think it's wise to say it now. All right. Kurt Volker, former U.S. ambassador to NATO, thank you.